Hey guys, this is a special request video. Some of you have asked if I could give you an update on the construction going on on the South Lawn of the White House. Um, there's been very little press about this. There was a story in CNN and there's a couple tweets from a couple journalists at the White House, but construction has been ongoing for almost two months now and is expected to continue through the summer at least another month. This is why the White House helicopters have been landing in the ellipse rather than the South Lawn. There's a giant ditch on the South Lawn. There's a bunch of plywood on the South Lawn. And as you see today, there's a bunch of workmen and bobcats and diggers and other things all going on where the helicopter normally lands. So I took my telephoto lens. I did some really close 32x uh, zoom onto the South Lawn to show you what I can show you. There's a lot of plywood and a lot of the work is being done in a ditch, kind of underground, so I can't really show you that much, but hey, this is what it looks like. So I decided to head down to the White House. Uh, I took a little different route today, show you a little bit another neighborhood, won't take too long. And after that, I decided, you know what? Hey, why don't I show you the IRS? Because you guys have been asking about the IRS again as well. We do a little loop around the IRS before heading up Embassy Row and coming back home later in the day. Anyway, enjoy. It's a little hazy today. Not as blue sky as it was yesterday. We got rain coming uh, in a couple hours, so I'm not sure how long I can be out biking around until the rain falls. So we're gonna we're gonna veer off Massachusetts Avenue today and head this direction. Why? Because there's not a lot going on down there. The vice president went off to Latin America, and they're not due back until aya. That sign like ran into me. We're not bed back till like midnight tonight. So we're gonna make our way down to the National Mall towards the White House. But truth be told, there's not much going on today. Uh, the president's schedule is empty. I think there's a press conference, but there's nothing on the public schedule. Uh, the vice president's not in town. Uh, the Bidens are heading off to England tomorrow for about a week. So it's going to be a pretty dull week coming up. That said, I do think we might see a lot of helicopter activity because when no one's home at the White House, they do practice drills. The Marines practice landing drills. So we might catch a bunch of helicopters this week. I'm kind of hopeful. Oh, this is a big downhill. So up here on my right is the Australian Ambassador's residence. It is a gorgeous place back behind that fence. Huge house with a grass tennis court and all this land for the Australian Ambassador. The Aussie Embassy right now, on the other hand, is a big hole in the ground. Maybe we'll go buy it today. A few of you have been asking to see the Australian Embassy. So we could go down there. It's down around 14th Street, down by the White House. It's slalom time. Ah, now there's a car coming. I gotta be more normal. So this is Adams Morgan, a neighborhood of restaurants and shops up here on 18th Street, 18th Street Northwest. A lot of cool places, Irish pubs, West African restaurant. You can come here if you want West African food. A few other shops, Hawaiian Pope Sushi. There is an Amsterdam falafel shop that has really good french fries. There it is. And it doesn't look like it's open yet. Erg. Well, we're just gonna have to get something else. Ah, bummer. Is it over here? Yeah, it is. So this just popped up a few months ago. I think I showed you while it was still being painted. But this is the Amanda Gorman mural, the girl who gave the uh, poetry reading at the inauguration. They went ahead and painted her face onto the side of this building. So this is 16th Street, and I believe, yeah, this is an old Carnegie Library. No, it's a Carnegie Institution. So that's like the Carnegie Think Tank or whatever, the Carnegie... Uh, foundation, not a library. But then, right over here, you see this construction ongoing on the right. This is the new Australian Embassy. So it's slightly more, slightly more than a hole in the ground at this point. They've got uh, two floors built, plus a huge basement with parking. Because it was a giant hole in the ground. Actually, three floors. 
looks like it's gonna have a giant atrium. The old Australian embassy had a huge atrium where they would show like New Zealand, Australia. You had to get up at like three in the morning, Washington time, to come over here to see the games there, of course, were, you know, in the afternoon in Australia. So this building up here on the left is the National Geographic Society headquarters. This is, you know, the National Geographic magazine and all the other like assorted TV channels and whatnot. I believe they have a new office building out in Virginia, but this is the original. This is where their museum is located. Right now you can see the Australian flag flying high because the top four floors or something like that are now considered the Australian embassy and technically diplomatically protected and all that. All right, we're just up here, just a few blocks from the White House. Let's go down and take a look, see what's new. So the White House is over here between this park. We'll spin by, take a quick look-see. But like I said, the public calendar is empty today. That doesn't mean he's not necessarily on the phone or something, but the public calendar is empty. Oof. Nice and quiet. These brakes are squeaky today. So there's a Segway tour down here. You can be led by a tour guide on Segways. And they'll spin you around the city. So you wanted an update on the construction. We're looking at the east wing. So right there, guys, you're looking at the east wing of the White House. And there you can see a little bobcat digger, guy working along the ditch. There's the fountain. You can see the fountain when you look at Google Maps. And I just saw another bobcat. And then they're swinging over here. That's more of the fence that's covering up the construction, the plywood and green fence. And then the White House itself is well, it's behind those trees, you can see. And the west wing is behind there. I'm gonna go over the other side so you can see the west wing. Now this white fence out here, this is the fence construction. Now that's been going on for about two or three years. But uh, today, you can see that they're working, they were working, where are they? There's a little bit of a sky crane over here. Today they were working, there they are. They're working over here and I think they're putting spikes on top of the fence, little pointy bits on top of the fence. There you can see the plywood fence and the terrace of the White House. So you can see why there's no helicopters landing on the White House lawn. So that area right behind the fountain, that's where the helicopters normally land. And as you can see, that's impossible right now given the construction that's ongoing over there. So at this moment in time, my camera is aimed pretty much at the Rose Garden and the Oval Office. The question is, can you see the Oval Office and the Rose Garden from the public areas outside the White House? I think it's a pretty emphatic no, you cannot see those areas. I've noticed those little towers over there. Those must be the news crews set up on top of that building. They, they are in those little tents or something. That's the uh, Chamber of Commerce building. That must be where the evening news does their broadcast from. More construction workers walking around. Hey, you know what, let's go up closer, yeah? So here's a much closer view of the White House construction. You can see the plywood fence behind the 
wrought iron fence. The wrought iron fence is the one that's just been replaced. It's now 14 feet instead of 8 feet. And you can see they've already put some pointy bits on the top over here. And I think that's what they're still doing. There's some guys inside working on the construction. We've seen some, uh, we've seen a few pieces of construction equipment, a digger and a bobcat. Don't know if they have anything bigger than that. But as you can see, there, there's simply no way to land a helicopter on the South Lawn while this construction is ongoing. They're like lifting something. I'm not sure what they're doing. It's not the spikes, though. So some of you have asked me, what are they actually building here? And I can't see anything through the boards. Well, neither can I. But from what I've been told officially, it's plumbing and telecommunications upgrades. Now, what I've pieced together from reading between the lines and looking at a few other things, this is a pretty advanced telecommunications upgrade. This is some sort of uh, national security related telecommunications, which to be expected, most of the telecommunications at the White House are national security related, but there's not a lot of details about exactly what's going on because it is sensitive. 14th Street. That's engine 16, first due at the White House. Anytime there's a call at the White House, that is the first due fire truck. In fact, it has the presidential seal on the back of the fire truck as an indication that it's one of the units that responds to the White House. But at this moment, I think it's just responding over here to the New York Avenue Presbyterian Church. Probably just a medical call. Yeah, but that's like their motto, Engine 16, first due at the White House. So they're the... They're the fire truck that's first responding along with Tower 3, which is, let me see if I can show you their logo. Huh, they didn't even get out. So back here on the back right corner of this fire truck, you'll see the presidential logo. There it is. The seal of the exec precedent. That's also present on the foam trucks that we see when the president's helicopter comes out. You also see that presidential logo on the fire truck. Okay, I think that brake problem was the front brake. I squeezed it to try to reset it a little bit. Oh, this is a hot dog. Poor thing. Sorry, sorry. Not much going on. There's no construction on this side. Some of you ask, could they land a helicopter on this side? And I think with that fountain, no. It would be, it'd be tricky. Plus, there's a lot of trees on this side. I mean, you could get a helicopter in there if you landed on top of the fountain. Maybe. There's a group of White House staff just coming back in from lunch. They've got their little lunch bags. This guy just let them in. A lot of you have asked, do I see staffers going in and out? Yeah, I do. Not like, hang on. Not like we saw pre-COVID. You know, pre-COVID, they would just come in and left and right. They'd be filled with the place. But now it's a bit more restrained. There are still some staffers working at home still a lot of government employees working at home. Sorry. So this is Customs and Border Protection. This is the Federal Triangle area. Uh, all these are government buildings. This is, uh, this is the EPA building, I believe. Yeah, Environmental Protection. And on the other side of the street, on the other side of that building, on the other side of the street, is the IRS. 
Well, take a look there. You guys are always interested to know what's going on at the IRS. Maybe you're waiting for a refund. I'm actually waiting for the state of Maryland to cash my check. I sent them some taxes, but they haven't cashed the check. I'm kind of wondering if they even got it. <laughs> this is a bouncy, bouncy uh, basket. The Woodrow Wilson Center. I think that's the Wilson Center for International Scholars. The Reagan International Trade Center. Not sure what they do in there. There's a food court. And this is the Federal Triangle Metro Station. Now this area of Federal Triangle is very prone to flooding. So we've seen a lot of sandbags out here. There's some over there. There's some over here covering up the grates that are like the air vents and the emergency exits of the subway system. So this is a well-known, well-documented problem that's been going on for well, flooding's been going on in this area for a hundred years, literally a hundred years, but their efforts to try to mitigate it have been going on for decades with sandbags. So here is the IRS, this building right over here, the Internal Revenue Service. And if I remember, this is the Trump Hotel right here. And behind, this is back here is where the entrance is to the IRS for employees. So employees have to come through this entrance back here. Yeah, that entrance back there is the IRS employee entrance. The other entrances are visitors' entrances, and they're all closed. This is the, uh, yeah, look at some cars, loading docks. Yeah, employee entrance, there's a sign saying closed. Here's the sandbags covering up this thing. Personally, I think it's a little high. I don't think the water gets this deep. I mean, we're talking a couple feet. I would be, like, up to my waist before these sandbags had any impact whatsoever. So I'm a little bit, like sus it's like why are you doing it it's not like there's that much water here i mean it would take like a huge 50-year flood so i don't know i mean it they had one in 2009 so during what is that superstorm Stan sandy or what well, that was not 2009 so here's the main visitor's entrance for the irs and it is closed there's a sign in the door saying go to the trump hotel entrance some guy with a souped up taxi cab <laughs> seriously that's like an old taxi cab that's the department of justice on the other side of the street irs is over on this side god this bike squeaks another entrance no entrance as an exit more sandbags interesting though down in this other corner there are no sandbags it's like all right we're high enough at this elevation we don't need it anymore So basically, there's only one entrance open, plus the parking garage slash loading dock kind of entrance. Ugh. Smells pretty bad. So yeah, so down here, the, the elevation of the ground goes up a bit, and then these, these grates are not covered. So this area up here does not have the sandbags. And I think on this whole side of the building, Pennsylvania Avenue side, there are also no sandbags. Yeah, they've got a big old wall up here. Nothing's going to be... God, if, if water's that deep, <laughs> people are going to be drowning. People would be drowning. And right next to the IRS is the Trump International Hotel. This building is, oh, what was this, Hungary? Oh, I can't remember. This is a cultural center. I was showing you like a cultural and trade center yesterday. So this isn't an embassy, but this is populated by diplomatic staff or consular staff. This is Kossuth House, K-U-S-S-U-T-H, Kossuth House, the Hungarian, uh, Hungarian Affairs, Cultural Affairs House. Now, the Hungarian embassy isn't that far from here. This is the Colombian Embassy, Republic of Colombia. Nice embassy. It's a beautiful building. That's the DuPont Circle Metro. 
They're putting up these uh, awnings on top of all the elevator shafts, escalator shafts, because their escalators are just getting too much exposure to the elements and breaking down. So they decided it was cheaper to put roofs on all of those than it was to replace the escalators every five or 10 years or however often it needs to be replaced. I think this is the Embassy of Cyprus. And this is the Ambassador of Myanmar. That's the Guatemalan Chancery. That's the Armenian Embassy. This, of course, is Kenya. We've seen this before, Kenya being renovated right now, then Vietnam, then the Philippines, and then the Egyptian Ambassador's residence. And basically, we're on Embassy Row because all these houses up this street are basically all embassies or diplomatic compounds of one sort or another. It's chilly, Haiti, the old Pakistani embassy currently up for sale or for draft picks, a trade, a trade for a minor leaguer. <laughs> this is Croatia. Croatia plays. Yep. Dropping stuff again. Always dropping stuff on this bike. Tripod. It's because I didn't strap it in. There we go, it's strapped in now. So, uh, Croatia plays England. That's kind of a rematch of the World Cup semifinal, isn't it? The Euro 2021, which is the second biggest uh, soccer event in the world, starts this weekend. I mean, it's five years ago I was in France. God, it's been so long. This is the embassy of Chad. Their flag looks very much like the Embassy of Romania. I always get those two confused. Ooh. This is Zambia. They're getting renovated as well right now. Ooh, in the shade, in the breeze. Life is good. So I think it's the Federated States of Micronesia, former trust territory of the US. A bunch of islands we took over after World War II. Venezuelan ambassador's place. On my left is the old Japanese embassy. That is the old embassy. I believe that's where they were burning the documents on December 8th or December 7th, 1941. And then this is the new Japanese embassy, which is connected. And as huge as this embassy is, it's dwarfed by the Japanese ambassador's house, which I'm going to have to show you one day because it's a bit out of town. This is the Turkish embassy here. I know this is going to sound weird, but I'm like getting raindrops on me. Maybe that like one, that one solitary cloud up there is like dropping raindrops on you. So down on my right is Barack Obama's house, his Washington DC residence. Currently, I'm not sure if he's in or out, but uh, that's where he lives. It's under 24 hour protection by the Secret Service. You can't even go down the road in front of his house. If you're a neighbor, you gotta get like clearance every time you pull in or out of your house. And you gotta like notify them if you're having like a dinner party and stuff. Uh, up that street, you've got Sri Lankan embassy, Italian embassy, and the Danish embassy. It's also, it's also the Polish ambassador lives up there. And at the end of the street is Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton's Washington address. So that's the White House construction, the Embassy Row, and a little bit of the IRS. I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I finally hit the 100,000 mark. I get a little silver play button in the mail sometime soon. Uh, I appreciate your subscriptions a great deal, and I'm going to keep making videos to try to keep you entertained, to try to keep you informed, and uh, just to show you what life is like here in Washington, D.C. before I zip off to Hong Kong for a little bit. And then I'll show you life in Hong Kong, and then I'll be back, and we'll show you life in D.C. again. All right, have a good night. See you later.